What's going on guys, you already know who it is, and in this video I'll be showing you how you can make your own click GUI. And yeah, I'm mostly just going to be covering the basic uh, components like handling mouse input so that you can toggle stuff from the menu. Now, I know this might be a little bit difficult to believe, but to make a good menu, all you need to do is ask yourself a simple question. Do you want to be a clown, or do you want to make something original? Now, I know the answer that you're about to give, so let's do it. Things you're going to need is a draw rect function, which we have, a draw strength function, which we have, and winproc, which is already set up. So all that's left is to lay, make a layout of how everything's going to look. Solve thinking, uh, we use OOP, have a global list of categories. Every category has modules and variables that store things like the position, if it's open, and so on. And then every module will have uh, like a list of settings, which is optional and like some variables like if it's toggled and so on so for the visual layout i'm thinking of doing like a drop down thing like i showed in the beginning this is what a lot of cl clients have so yeah, like you can move the categories around you can like right click them to open them up and then you can click all the modules to toggle them implementing the quick joy requires a couple of changes so the first one is going to be in the base module class added a new variable which is the category and just have it set to default cat and then in every single module, there's a new event that it listens to called on toggle. And uh, here's the description of it. So last place has on toggle, Google has on toggle. And then there's a new module for the click GUI. It has a couple extra functions. So create click GUI and on render in addition to all the other ones. So let's go into main.cpp and let's look at the winproc function. So there's quite a lot of new stuff here. First, we have a check to figure out if the click GUI is open, which we'll use in a bit. We listen to a couple new events, so the mouse click. So this is the four things, and it just uh, figures out like mouse X when Y, and if it's a left or right click, so that's what it figures out here. And then since the event, so a mouse click event, if uh, these four arguments, and you can debug it with this print statement. And then finally, if the click GUI is open, uh, we have this code to uh, make the cursor visible and to return the one, which cancels the input. So Minecraft doesn't receive the click event. And then we have the same thing for mouse movement. So we listen for the mouse move event, hit the X and Y, left and right, and we send the event of mouse move and the same check if the click GUI is open. Otherwise, we just uh, have a regular return. Then in main, we register these uh, two new events, mouse click and mouse move. I'll show these functions in a bit. And create a new click GUI module instance, push it back, and then call uh, click GUI, create click GUI. So call this last after all, everything has been uh, initialized. All right, let's look in uh, modules.cp. So in the flight init, I'm sending the category to category one. This is like a custom one. If we go back, you'll see the default is default cat. And here I'm sending it to category one. I'm not going to be doing that for any other module. This is just an example. Then in it, I'm also uh, having a listen to mod toggled. And this is what the, the mod toggled thing looks like. So it just gets the name, converts it to a string for convenience. And then it just uh, checks if, it, if the name matches. And if so, then it calls toggle on itself. And this event will be sent from the click GUI when you try to toggle something. So fast place is also listening to it. And so is uh, Ninja Bridge. So now let's get to uh, click GUI. So we have these uh, two new events. This is the create click GUI function. So let's look at it. Um, we're going to be making these CGI category uh, things, which I have uh, implemented in, in this file. I'll get to it. So I make two uh, new instances. I'm giving this one the name category one. And uh, if you remember, the fly hack has the same name. But I'm just setting its position and pushing it back to the categories thing. This is a new one, and I'm just going to be calling it default cat. So every other module will go into this. And finally, for every single module we have, for every single category, 
with the module name and category name matches, create a new click dry module, copy the name, and then uh, copy the pointer for whether or not it is enabled. And then uh, category modules push back the click dry module and yeah, break. Finally, we have um, the event render thing, which just renders the click UI and the on toggle. So the on render is called from, wait, yeah. So on render listens to this render click UI event. So this is a new event again. And uh, when we call that, so yeah. In the render event, if we go to the very end, we want to render the click UI last. So it is on top of everything. So this is where we call render click UI from. And before we call it, we need to make sure we do all of this. This is set up so that we can do proper 2D rendering. So any of the 3D stuff we did right here and anything else, then we set this up to do 2D rendering and call uh, render click UI. So we call this event, it gets to this function. And then if the click UI is enabled, then we call this. So this uh, jumps over here to click UI, that's CVP. Let's look at the header first. So first we um, define the render click UI event to mouse click and mouse move events. This is something you can implement yourself if you want. I just don't want to add it yet because there's a lot of complexity with it. But yeah, so this is the click UI module thing that was uh, used in here. This is it right here. And it has the mod name, a list of options, the position, width, and the uh, depth or height, colors, a pointer for it or not toggled, which uh, we copy right here. This is the thing that we copy. So yeah, then like a boolean if it's open, a function to handle uh, mouse clicks, and a function to render. And then this is just like a default constructor. Then the category is very similar. Like we have a default name, like uh, but we also have a mouse move function with it, and we have a extern uh, vector of categories. So now let's look and click try the CVP. This is where the categories are defined. This is the render click joy function, which is called from here. This is what we call from the click joy. We call this. This loops through all the categories backwards, and it renders them. And uh, if you want to understand why, just read this. That's why we should do it backwards. So it calls it category render. So it calls this function for every single category. And here we set the font, enable transparency, set the color, draw the rectangle, which is like the, uh, the body of the category, I guess. Set the color to something different, and then draw the string. So this is so that the rectangle and string have two different colors. Then uh, have a temporary variable for the Y position. If the category is open, loop through every single module within the category, copy the X position, Y position from the temporary variable, copy the width and depth. And uh, yeah, then just call um, click join module dot render. And finally add the new depth that was calculated um, to the next Y. So the next module is rendered at a different Y level. Say we're calling a module render, which is right here. So again, we set the font, but with a different font size. So this is 22, and this is 25. Enable uh, transparency, set the color, draw the rectangle. Now we have a check to see if it's toggled. This just uh, checks and sets a different color so that we know if it's toggled or not when we render it. Then we draw the string and then we return the depth. So the reason why we uh, return the depth from the module is because the module can have a different size. If we have options in it, it can have a different uh, size, which means that the module should return its own size so that, uh, yeah, it like returns the size and then that's used to offset so the next module is rendered in the right spot. So now let's get to the mouse events. So we have the mouse click event and the mouse move event. And just as a reminder, um, 
these events are called from the wind park. So this is mouse click, this is mouse move. So yeah, first we get the arguments. So left click, right click, X and Y. You need to adjust the X and Y position because in the graphics that H, we do this, which makes it so that zero zero is the middle of the screen. But Windows treats zero zero as the top left. So we adjust the X and Y. Then we have the uh, thing to check if the click UI is enabled. And if it is, then for every single category, send a mouse click event to that category. And mouse move is very similar. It's the same stuff. Like get these variables, adjust them, check that. But we send a mouse move event. So both of these go to the click UI category. So if we go up here, we have click UI category, mouse click, click UI category, mouse move. So uh, let's look at this function. We have this check, and this checks if the click happened inside of the box. So if it's a left click, enable dragging, uh, copy this to these temporary variables, which I'll uh, explain in a bit. If it's not a left click, then disable dragging. If it's a right click, then change if it's open and return true. If uh, this check failed, then we live through every single click dry module and uh, send the mouse click event. And if one of them uh, returns true, then we return true as well. Otherwise, return false. So in the click dry category, mouse move. Again, we have the same check. If it's within the box, so it's the same check here and here. Um, yeah, if it's drag and left click, we just do some stuff with the X and Y position and return true, otherwise return false. So then for the module mouse click, if it's a left click and it's within the box, then we send that mod toggle event with the mod name. So let's imagine we have the menu open, we click a module, we send this event, let's say we want to toggle the fly hack. So this event gets sent and then we go up here, fly on toggle. So this will run. It'll uh, see that the name matches and it'll toggle it. So this is how we toggle from the click UI. So yeah, now um, for these uh, return trues and falses, if we, um, if you think about it, when you click on one thing, you only want one thing to be clicked. So once a click takes place, we should uh, stop sending the click out. We should just uh, return true. So that's what all of this is like return true, return false, all of that. If a click takes place and it's like within the box, we always return true. So that yeah. Um so let's let's launch the game and see what like what this actually looks like. So I'm gonna inject. Yeah. Now if we uh, go over here I have a click joy set to zero. That's the key bind, so I'm gonna hit zero. And as you can see, this is the most beautiful click joy ever. It's super cool. Um, yeah, you can right click it to open them, close them, and stuff. And I can't click anything else while the click joy is open unless I close it. So let me get in game. And uh, yeah, let's, let's open it up again. So if I click on fly hack, I can enable it from the menu like that. I can also use the key binds and it still shows up in the menu. So yeah, this is like a functional click UI. You can drag stuff around, you can enable stuff. So yeah, and you can disable it from the menu as well like that. So yeah. <laughs> Guys, Cody and the gang are at the park playing football with down down Darius Jackson. Let's go! You're not going anywhere without your big game liquid slam. Excellent! Go long. This one's going downtown. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. You look at a full team. Yeah! Yeah! Liquid Slam! 
Come on! 